Hey kids, uh, this is Dr. White. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Boyle's Law. Okay, Boyle's Law is the law that uh, relates a volume to pressure. Okay, so if you look at the schematic here that we have going on the screen, okay, we've got a we've got a piston. Let's get the piston going here. We've got a piston that is going up and down on a cylinder. Okay, and we're plotting volume versus pressure. Okay, now what you see as the piston descends, our volume gets smaller. Okay, that should be pretty easy to, to see. Okay, we're holding temperature constant, and as the piston descends, we see the volume gets smaller and the pressure ends up getting larger as we make the volume smaller. Okay, so as we decrease the volume, we increase the pressure. Okay, and that's what Boyle's Law states, is that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. Okay, that's an important word there. Okay, now we can draw an equation, okay, that will relate pressure times volume in one set of circumstances and we know that that's going to be equal to pressure times volume in a second set because we know that they're inversely proportional. Okay. Now the units we're going to use for Boyle's law calculations, okay, are going to be our big three of pressure. Okay. One of them is going to be atmospheres. Okay. If you see atmospheres, that means you're talking about pressure. Okay. One of them is going to be millimeters of mercury. You know, you're talking about pressure if you're talking about millimeters of mercury. And also, we can use the SI unit. Okay, which would be Pascals. Okay, volume. Uh, we can use any units we want for volume: uh, liters, milliliters, centimeters cubed. Dot dot dot. Okay, there's a lot of different uh, ways of talking about volume. Okay, now the graph for PV. Okay, is like. It wasn't that schematic, all right? As you increase volume, your pressure is going to decrease, and it's kind of a curved-looking graph. Okay, whenever you see a curved-looking graph, you're probably talking about Boyle's Law. Okay, so let's go over a couple of conceptual problems. Remember that uh, volume and pressure are inversely proportional. Okay, now, if we decrease the volume in this one, we're decreasing the volume, that means the pressure has to go up. Well, now, if we decrease the volume by a factor of 2, that means, right, because we cut it in half, okay, we basically timed it by, multiplied it by 1 half. Okay, that's a factor of 2. Then we know that the pressure has to go up by a factor of 2. Okay, so what happens to the pressure? We're going to multiply the pressure times 2. Okay, let's get rid of my right here so we can see the next question okay now what happens if we triple the pressure okay so we're going to take the pressure up that means volume has to go down doesn't it okay what must have happened to the volume of the gas well if we are taking the pressure up by by a factor of three volume needs to go down by a factor of three that's the same thing as multiplying that volume by one third you're going to get one third of the volume okay now, last question, if volume doubles, what happens to pressure? Well, volume's going up, it's increasing, it's doubling, okay? Pressure correspondingly has to go down, okay? Now, volume's going up by a factor of two, that means pressure has to go up, or go down by a factor of two. Same thing as multiplying, you get one half of the pressure, okay? So we get P, the new pressure is going to be P over two. Now, if we want to get a little bit mathematical about things, okay, we can plug things into our fun Boyle's Law equation here. Okay, P, P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Okay, and all this is is an equation that's got four different variables in it, okay? And generally when you're solving these, you look for the three, you look for three given variables and you solve for the fourth variable. Okay, so let's look at the word problem and figure out what we're given. Okay, the volume of gas is 99, uh, the volume of gas at 99 kPa, okay, kPa, that is a unit of what? kPa is a unit of pressure, so that's our P1, okay, 
and we see the volume is 300 milliliters. Okay, so that's going to be our V1. Now the pressure is increased to 188 kPa, so that's going to be our P2. And what would be the new volume? And the new volume is going to be equivalent to V2. Okay, so we're looking for this guy right here. So let's plug in what we know and see if we can't figure out what we don't know. Okay. So 99 kPa, that's P1, times V1, which is 300 milliliters. That's going to equal 188 kPa times V2. Okay, if we do a little fancy algebra, okay, we can get V2 by its lonesome over here, 99 kPa. 300 mils here, and then on bottom we have 188 kPa. Okay, and if you work that out, I think I worked it out earlier, it's going to come out to about 158 milliliters. Okay, notice that my units for volume are the same as the units that I started with for, for milliliters. Okay, and that makes sense, right? If we double the pressure from 99 to 188, we're going to cut the volume about in half. And that's what we do, 300 to 158. Okay, now let's do another one. Okay, I'm going to go through that same process. All right, let's see if you can follow along uh, and predict what the next uh, step's going to be. Okay. Okay, so once we get our answer, 0.494 atmospheres, okay, um, let's make sure we, we've got it right conceptually. So we're increasing the volume from 1 to 2. So we're doubling the volume. That means the pressure must go down. Okay, we increase it by a factor of 2, so the pressure is going to go down by a factor of 2. And we end up with 0.94 atmospheres. Okay, so these are two typical uh, math problems that you can do uh, using Boyle's Law. Um, hopefully this helped. Uh, stay tuned for uh, vodcasts on uh, Charles Law as well as Guy Lussac's Law later. Okay, uh, this is Dr. White signing out. Thanks a lot.